I've never tracked my ovulation before. This is where we need a gynecologist. I'm disappointed. Is this an ovulation cramp? Am I just imagining this cramp? I did look down into my knickers today. Out comes one egg. Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Hormone Diaries. How do you like that new intro? Yeah? Yeah? I mean, I really should have got my shit together and got the new intro all done and together with the book branding before we launched this new series, but it was Christmas and New Year and it didn't happen, but we got it for episode three. And so I'm considering that a win. This episode is all about tracking my ovulation. Yes, I tried ovulation strips, ovulation tests. I did that whole thing. If you're new here, hello, I'm Hannah. My partner and I are trying to conceive and I have this series called The Hormone Diaries where we talk about periods, contraception and hormones and we're just doing a season two documenting this fertility journey. I feel like I should acknowledge the ears. This is for another video that's on my friend Lena's channel that will be out in April and I didn't feel like taking them off for filming so we're sticking with them. Maybe you can try and guess in the comments what it's all for. So before we dive into all of the vlog footage of me tracking my ovulation and the experience with all of that, I thought I would explain what you're actually tracking when you use ovulation tests. It is a thing called the luteinizing hormone. I do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but we're just gonna call it LH because that's what it seems to be referred to as. So your LH peaks right before ovulation and that's because it is the luteinizing hormone that actually triggers ovulation. It gets those little follicles and your ovaries all active and active and out comes one egg, yay! So the presence of LH indicates that ovulation is occurring or will occur in the next day. Now, I'm not sure if you could have a spike in LH and maybe not ovulate. I'm sure that that is probably the case for some people just because bodies do all sorts of weird things that they're not supposed to do sometimes, but it generally is the indicator that you're about to ovulate. You are the most fertile and most likely to get pregnant in the couple days before ovulation and on the day that you ovulate. So there's like a few days of a window, maybe even a week because of the length of time that sperm can survive up in the uterus, but like peak fertility, probably just two or three days. They do not tell you this shit in school. So LH is what ovulation tests look for. So this episode kicks off where we left off in the last episode, post period, post wedding, and I will let past Hannah take it away. Apparently I love doing all of my updates. Just sat here, it's very comfy on the floor. So, got married, day four of period, it was fine, popped in a menstrual cup at the beginning of the day, popped it out at the end of the day, no faff. If we weren't officially trying before, we are now. <laughs> Obviously my period's finished now. I still have no clue what's going on with my cycle, honestly. I did look down into my knickers today and I saw some of that creamy white discharge, so I'm gonna pop that in my app. Technically on day 10 right now. Last month was only 30 days. So, again, that, that to me is not even a predictor. Like, I can't even use that to predict what this cycle is gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be another 30 day -er. Maybe it will be 60 days. Who knows? Because my cycle is so goddamn unpredictable, at least from past experience, I was like, what if I bought some ovulation strips? And so I did that. I just, I just wanna know, I love data about my body. I don't really wanna use these every day. I don't really wanna use it as like a, oh my God, ovulating, go, go, go. Like that scene in Friends, that's the only thing I have in my head of like Monica and Chandler when they're trying for a kid. It pains me to watch these next few clips of me talking absolute nonsense about the ovulation tests because I didn't realize how they actually work. Now, don't worry, I do figure it out eventually. So hold in your frustration, keep watching. I do figure it out. But I just bought them today and I just did one of the tests now just to see what it was like so I could report back. But honestly, I don't think I'm gonna use another one until the day that my boobs start hurting because I just wanna like, just see how things play out. Honestly, I'm not quite ready to start gaming the system yet, but I wanted to try to see like how the ovulation strip works. And then the reason why I'm tempted to do another one again on the day that my boobs start hurting is because 
that's the day that I feel like I go from pre-ovulation to post-ovulation, <laughs> but I can't be sure. So this is mine. It came out negative as I expected it to. This cup did have my pee in it, but I uh, poured it out for your sake. But if you can see, so there are two lines on it and two lines does mean positive, but because one is fainter, that means it is negative. If both of the lines were solid, kind of like this one, if both of them were like that, then that would have been positive. Oh, I think I, I can put in negative ovulation test in the app as well. I don't know if that like changes its predictions, but there we go. We'll find out. We got back from our honeymoon last night and when I was getting ready for bed, took my bra off and pff, saw breasts. So I'm kind of like, is this just my natural cycle? Is this my like period is gonna come in two weeks kind of sore breasts? Or is it a pregnancy to sore breasts? Who knows? So da -da 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 -da, I did what I said I was gonna do and I took another ovulation strip test yesterday, but it came back negative. Can you see that? No, you can't because it's focusing on my face. I did actually a few days ago have some cramps, but I am so new to like, really intentionally focusing on what I can feel <laughs> in my body that I'm like, is this an ovulation cramp? Am I just imagining this cramp? Like, what is it? Am I just hungry or tired or am I, have I eaten too much? But I put it in the app as an ovulation cramp and then like, it's like three days later then my boobs start hurting. So it could well be, from what I understand, about PMS and the menstrual cycle. It could well be, I ovulated and then a few days later, um, after I didn't get pregnant from that ovulation, my PMS regular thing happens. So we will see. I'm now like on a two-ish week waiting to see if my period comes. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't. The boob hurting just it feels so familiar to me. I'm like, okay, there, there it is, right? Two weeks later period, so not getting my hopes up. In case anyone was confused why I didn't take an ovulation test when I felt those cramps, we were on our honeymoon. I didn't take any of the ovulation tests with us. It was just enjoying ourselves, so didn't bother. Oh, I'm lying on the day bed in the office when I should be working because I have period cramps. Because I woke up this morning and there was my period and I'm disappointed. You know, it takes people ages to get pregnant. You know, you hear these stories of people like starting to try and then they're like pregnant in the first month. I mean, that was my parents, but yes. That doesn't happen to everyone. We're only like one month into like actually really, really trying. You still start catastrophizing <laughs> everything, but that's not necessarily a good thought process to start going down at this stage when we're so early in the journey. And this is me just like calming myself down and also dealing with the fact that my uterus hurts. One silver lining though, is that it wasn't a full two weeks of my boobs hurting. Actually, how long was it? I was actually quite surprised to see my period this morning because I was just like, hang on, it's not been two weeks. So my period started today, 6th of October. My boobs started hurting then, 25th of September. Almost two weeks, 12 days. But yeah, meh. Not pregnant. So I think I'm getting ovulation pains today. There's like a twinge and like a like occasional cramp and stabbing in my left side. Definitely coming up negative because the first line is fainter than the control line, but it's the clearest it's been. So I'm really confused. I'm like, what are these stabbing pains in my left side? I've never tracked my ovulation before. I've never even felt ovulation pains before. When I was on contraception, maybe because the contraception was stopping me from ovulating, so I wouldn't have felt them then. But even when I had that year off contraception, I don't know if I felt them, but I also wasn't looking out for them. Like I, I wasn't paying attention to that. So maybe I felt them and I was just like, oh, my tummy feels weird today. I don't know. <sighs> It's the clearest it's been, but it's definitely still fainter than the control line. Also, I'm out of ovulation strips. I'd need to go buy some more, but honestly, I'm like, is this just causing me more stress? I'm on day 16 of my cycle, so it could be about now, and my boobs haven't started hurting yet. So like all of the signs say that like, it could be, oh, there's, oh, there's one. <laughs> yeah, 
I don't know what ovulation pains are meant to like be like. I was like looking it up on the NHS and on Clue and I'm like, where in my side is it meant to be? Like how far up? Like, is it a continuous cramp or like random? And then, so apparently they, it can last like just a moment or it can last like a couple of days. I don't know, Ooh, there's another little twinge. <sighs> Very strange. So my cramps are happening about here, but like, <laughs> there's my ovulation stick. But my period pains happen here. Like, how uterus, but are there ovaries just, oh, I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> this is where we need a gynecologist to be like, yeah, right there, about there. It's like kind of like just above my hip bone. <sighs> I don't know. Okay, we can all now stop screaming at past Hannah for not understanding how ovulation tests work because in this next clip, she figures it out. So I think I've been getting the ovulation test thing completely wrong. <laughs> not that I've been doing the actual test wrong, but like the bigger picture. So I ran out of tests and I still had the instruction thingy and I saw that there was a little calendar on it which I didn't notice before but basically it's got two different things your cycle length and the day of cycle to begin testing and I was like begin testing because <laughs> I've just been doing it on random days but now that I logically think about it Hannah that's so stupid because I wondered why I was just like this is a helpful like how do you know like you never know when you're gonna ovulate until like afterwards really so I just feel really stupid honestly the idea is that you get your pack of five or however many it is and you start your testing and you test every day for those days and see if you notice any change problem with that though especially for me because I've got a longer cycle and I have no idea when I ovulate in the middle of that Picking five days just randomly in the middle, like what if I get those five days wrong and what if it, I should have tested it just before or just after? I'm gonna pause that washing machine one second. <laughs> I've only had two full cycles since taking the coil out. One was 30 days and the other was 35 days. And I'm currently on day 23 of my current cycle, but my boobs aren't hurting yet and my boobs normally hurt for like, currently it's like between 10 and 14 days. 32 day cycle. Begin cycle testing on day 16. Well, we missed that, but who knows? My cycle is so unpredictable because if it was gonna be 30 or 35 days again with how my cycle normally is, my boobs would be hurting by now. Anyway, I went to Boots and I bought a new pack. These are the only ones they had. There's seven of them. They're slightly fancier ones. And so I was reading the instructions, but this one's a bit more clearer about the fact that you're supposed to start testing and do it regularly every day. And basically one of these packs is meant to last you for one cycle. That wasn't clear to me. <laughs> Am I really stupid? So for best results, perform the test at about the same time each day between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, some women have found that their best urine sample, we love a good urine sample, is after 12 noon. It is currently after 12 noon. It is like half one p.m. and it says, Reduce your liquid intake and do not urinate for at least four hours before you collect your urine. First morning urine may be an acceptable option for women who find it difficult to do a four hour hold. So I just thought I'd just fucking go for it. I did the test, I followed the instructions and it's probably done now and I'm gonna go and get it. Okay, so this fancier brand is actually much easier to read. Like one is definitely clearer than the other. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. I think that means there is no surge in the luteinizing hormone. Okay, so that's definitely still a negative test result. Who knows if ovulation was behind me? Maybe I've already ovulated. Maybe I've not ovulated yet. This was like 11 pounds, but fuck it. I'm just gonna do it. Oh, or is it gonna be a waste? Is it gonna be a waste doing it this month? Because I've already had lots of like pains that I thought maybe have been ovulation pains. Oh, have I mentioned this yet? I was about to like put this on my face, but this is clean. I had some extremely eggy white discharge the other day, and that is a sign of potential ovulation. So that's already happened. That was like a couple days ago. <sighs> this is hard. I think I'm just gonna wait. If I get my period this month, then next month I'll do these. But when will I do them? Who knows? Or do I do them now? Oh, I don't know. I wish I could just like wait and see, just like do fuck all and let it happen. But I just like really want to be pregnant. <laughs> I really want to have a baby. 
And that is it. I actually didn't film anything after that. And that's because I got my period and I was really sad about it. And then also at this time, I just had general life documenting fatigue and was feeling really down about it. So never wanted to pick up the camera. But I will say that the next month I did the ovulation tests correctly and I did get a positive result, which meant that I did detect the peak in my LH, not guaranteed ovulation, but potential indication of ovulation occurring very handy. And interestingly, I got that positive result the day before I felt those same cramps that I suspected might be ovulation cramps. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, confirmed, LH peak, next day ovulation cramps. My body doing a thing. But then my boobs started hurting, which for me is an indication that my period is about to come. I have entered the luteal phase of my cycle and I got real sad about it. I think this was maybe my lowest point so far <laughs> in this whole journey of trying to conceive. I was really sad and my period arrived just before Christmas and there was a blessing to that because I knew that I wasn't pregnant. So I got absolutely smashed over Christmas and New Year. Maybe not the most healthy coping mechanism with it all, but hey, I enjoyed myself. Dan had a nap after Christmas dinner and I just drank lots of gin by myself and had a dance and singing along party whilst he was asleep. And then I had to lie down because I can't handle my drink anymore. <laughs> But New Year, fresh start, we decided that from after New Year, we wouldn't drink, even Dan. Dan has significantly cut back on the amount of beer he's drinking and he is now a connoisseur of all different kinds of non-alcoholic beer. So if you need non-alcoholic beer recommendations, I can <laughs> ask Dan and feed that back to you. And then also I decided not to do ovulation tests again because doing it just kind of stressed me out. Like the really granular detail and kind of obsessing over these results and how sad I was afterwards when it didn't work. I didn't really like want to repeat that again. And so instead of trying to game the system and time it all, we are just having sex every two to three days, which is generally what is recommended and hoping for the best. Mm -mm -mm. I did decide to bust out my old natural cycles thermometer and started tracking my temperature. Now the app that I've been using to track all my period stuff for the last like however many years is Clue. And they do have a bit where you can put in the temperature, but the graph isn't very good. So I'm doing a video where I'm testing five different period tracker apps, fertility tracker apps. So I've been inputting my data into five different apps. It's a lot of admin. But once I've used all five of them for a while, I will be doing a video reviewing them all and comparing all of their different features and how they work for me. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that episode of The Hormone Diaries coming out soon, who knows when. So by the end of 2020, I had had four full cycles since getting my coil taken out. The first of 30 days, then 35 days, then 37 days, and then 39 days. It's fine. So I actually need to start changing my language. Like even whilst filming this, I've noticed myself saying months, like this month, that month, mm -mm -mm, cycles. I need to use the term cycle, not month, because my cycle is not one month. Thank you so much for watching. Big love to everyone out there who is on any kind of fertility journey. I hope that you are all doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.